Get some batteries. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it'll, 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 it'll hear you and pick it up, and I'll have it. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Sorry, I had to replace some batteries and couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, so I got that done. But it's good to see everybody here tonight. We welcome everybody. Good to see all y'all. Um, we'll go to the Lord in prayer here in just a few minutes. So let's go over a couple of um, announcements tomorrow night. Uh, we've got an executive committee meeting at the, um, the association. That's at Tuckerdale. And Glenn, I know we're going. I don't know if Ed will come or not, but I'll call him. But uh, like I said, I got a meeting at six. I already had a meeting there. Um, hmm. Where was 
Oh, yeah. Uh, mention just something about the state missions. Just always want to say thank you for those that give. Uh, remind you again that there's a flyer back in the vestibule uh, for those that would be interested in being a prayer warrior for some teachers at the middle school. And again, like I said, uh, Sunday, uh, there is a phone number or email on there. If you could let Paul know, that would be great. And um, keep in mind, October 25th coming up, we're going to have uh, a one-day revival. That's at, uh, we'll have a 10 a.m. service and a 6 p.m. service. That's on a Sunday. And then October 31st, uh, we're going to be uh, participating in the countywide trunk or treat. So uh, Karen is going to need your help. I know quite a few of the members of the youth council are going to be gone that weekend. So we'll need people willing to uh, set up the car and, and help hand out candy. Uh, if you don't want to come and do that, if you want to bring candy, you can just start bringing it any time and we can start gathering it and uh, we'll put out more information about that but if you've got any questions at all just ask Karen we're probably going to be set up up here on the hill with plenty of lights and uh, set up in a safe manner six to eight uh, Karen is ordering some stuff um, and uh, we're going to be packing a bag from the church uh, with candy but also uh, a little Christian gift and also um, a little flyer in there inviting them to our youth and kids ministries and the church in general. So uh, it'll be a good opportunity. So we're looking for about a hundred kids or so to come through. More on that comes. Just got to close up shop. All right, any other now? What? Well, that probably ain't going to happen there. Anybody else got any announcements or anything that they need to mention? If not, then um, we'll spend a little time in prayer tonight. I know it's definitely, uh, uh, Brother Terry will be going back to the dock on Friday. And then she'll be going back next Tuesday. In our prayers and David. Other prayer concerns, praise reports, testimonies. Okay, so Ginger's doing a lot better, and that's good. Well, it may run, it have to run its course. Tony Richardson. Uh, Tony Richardson. Tony Richardson. Drew Gilly. Brother Bill. Lady had it. Has it? I have a praise report. Um, most of y'all know I'm diabetic, and I went to the doctor in July. And my hemoglobin A1C is so high that it's living in the red. Mm. Like four percent. And I went back to the doctor Monday, three months later, and I cut it in half, seven point two. Point three point three. 
like my doctor's happy at my age point one. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Age that ain't very high. <laughs> On a record scale, that might be bad, but I mean, well, I, I guess I gotta keep trying. Doctor Page like he did that day whenever it was that Yeah, I saw that where she had to ride back Sunday. Who does? Uh, Leanne. Good. It's always good to get good reports from your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a little bit nervous, not knowing what it's going to be, and then it turns out to be pretty good. And like, I got one glass of iced tea, didn't hurt too bad once a month. That ain't going to kill him. <laughs> All right, anybody else with prayer concerns or testimony? Blevins. Well, let's keep, a, keep Larry and Bert in our prayers. One of our doctor's parents passed away and they were supposed to be tomorrow and then one of our GAs and mother-in-law passed away and they're going to be praying over the sick one right now. Remember our youth and kids, the ladies that work with them. So, Bobby, we need leaders in prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you again this morning to say we love you, we pray that you would bring us back to peace and we would be back to God. Bring more baptisms to your church. Bring your prayers to God. Bobby, and of course we want to, our prayer sheet that came is out each week in the bulletin, uh, it really helps uh, to have that to go by, it kind of helps you keep up with things throughout the week, and of course we want to remember all of our other shut-ins, uh, Dexter and Lois, always keep them in our prayers. Appreciate your prayers for my dad. He went down there Saturday and he just keeps getting worse. And so, uh, you know, hard to, hard to see. And he's having a hard time communicating and stuff. So, appreciate your prayers for him. Thank you, Michael. Yes. You might imagine it's rough on her, but she's a trooper, and uh, she will go that she can't go no more. But uh, as we've seen many times, you know that's that's rough on us when we're fighting. So we're still in prayer for our dad. Yep, yep. All right. Testimony. Anybody got a testimony? I'll be mentioning that here in just a minute, but I've been thinking about that a lot. As hard as life is, and as much as I stumble, I could not imagine not having the Lord in my life. Wow. I don't know how anybody does it without it. Well, let's turn in our Bibles to Psalms 23 again. And uh, we were there Sunday, and uh, just... Uh, 
As the Lord leading back here, there's a couple things I want to uh, make sure we go over. I know you've probably heard it before, but if you remember, on Sunday I said, I made this statement, it was actually something I read. It said, there are places in Scripture that are so powerful, so deep, that to recite them is to experience I wanted to say that again because that's kind of connected me to where you take a moment of your day. Of course, there's a lot of scripture and a lot of things we can do uh, to encourage ourselves. But I'm finding that more and more to be true to just to read those words is to experience those words. Because when you read them, you're reminded of what they mean. You know, when I hear green pastures, and still waters, and, um, you know, that's, that'll help you, and um, so, the uh, author that I read said, the psalm itself is a green pasture, it is a still, still waters, it restores my soul, what are your thoughts on that, I mean, could just read, if you turn to the 23rd Psalm and just read it, could that restore your soul, just reading it? Sure it can. Why? It's all there. It's all there. It is, after all, the Word of God. Say, we, we say it so many times. Let's read it again because sometimes we're guilty of not reading it because well, we, can, we can quote it or we've got it memorized, but let's read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now Sunday, we, we did something a little bit different. We started, we is in verse 6. So the sermon itself was really from verse 6. So it didn't necessarily start out to go backwards, uh, but uh, and I don't think we are, but that's just where we started at. And so tonight, I want to focus in on the shepherd part. And I started to say that just knowing he's their shepherd and, and thinking how the shepherds take care of their sheep, that's something really to, that says it all right there. And I've heard that sheep uh, do not like the running water. They like to go to the still water to drink. Well, you know, even if you get in rivers, uh, some of us still get in there tube and get in the river. Some people just want to kayak. Go straight to the river. But even on the river, such as the New River, or anywhere, and on creeks, even if it's, you know, a river, creek, branch, whatever, you'll have places where the water's still. So you're right. And uh, it's, uh, you get out in the current, and if it's strong enough, it, it's hard to relax. But in the still water, it is. You can. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I, I try to, write, I try to uh, wrap my mind around that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, this is why David, who wrote the psalm, this is why he could say in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, 
Bible says that David says, I was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning me. <laughs> because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But here's what the Bible says. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Over the years, I have hung on to that, that little phrase. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. There's things in this life that you like to do. That if you know that you're going to go do something tonight or tomorrow that you like to do, it's easy to be encouraged. And this is where you got to get to down into deep water like this. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. David was able to encourage himself in the Lord because David knew that the Lord was his shepherd. And that's the difference. And I've been thinking about that quite a bit. So if we, uh, if we contemplate on that, if we study on that, if we meditate on that, the fact that the Lord is my shepherd, that means I'm going to go where the Lord says go. I'm going to do what the Lord says to do. I've watched uh, goats and sheep and uh, there's a place over in, um, in Avery County, the big sheep farm. And uh, I think, what's those big white dogs? The great Perry? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that and uh, they're pretty fascinating to watch, you know, as a sheep dog. I remember my dad, uh, they used to have a bunch of goats. And they had a, a border collie, and they trained, and he could herd his goats wherever he wanted, wanted them to go most of the time with his dog using German commands. And uh, he thought he got a pretty good kick out of that too. So sometimes he'd move his sheep from here to yonder, excuse me, yonder, uh, just to move them over there. The men's going to get mad at me one of these days about saying yonder. <laughs> but now what's so hilarious is when I said Sunday, when I, when I asked, everybody said yonder. I thought it was. Humor me. Um, so you think about the sheep being herded. They don't always want to go where you want them to go. Now, I've never been around sheep much. Uh, I have some goats, and goats are just aggravating. So if sheep's worse than that, pretty sure I don't want to be a, 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 a herder for sheep. Actually, I'd be aggravating. So... Let me, let me put this thought in your mind tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want is what the Bible says. So what that tells me that if the Lord was not my shepherd, I might otherwise be in want. Now think about that. Think about all the people tonight who are not Christians. They cannot say. I believe we all here tonight can say that the Lord is my shepherd. But think about those who cannot say that, who does not say that. They're in a constant state of want. They can't say what we say as a Christian. He was not my shepherd. As I said a few minutes ago, as hard as life is, how can we possibly make it without God as our shepherd? I don't know. Uh, Chuck Smith says, I shall not want provisions because he makes me to uh, lie down in green pastures. He leads me to where the provisions are at. I shall not want for refreshment because he, he leads me or he leads me to beside the still waters. I shall not want for strength because he restores my soul. I shall not want for direction because he leads me in the paths of righteousness. So let's talk about tonight the Lord being our shepherd. And the fact that the Lord is our shepherd, it sustains us. I think we can all agree, agree to that, right? So in, in Psalms chapter 23, verse 1, think about that first phrase. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a declaration and a testimony right there. So, I mean, think about that as far as living your life. We all got things. 
sitting there watching the TV tonight, and one of those commercials comes on for uh, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, and boy, it's a tearjerker. Man, we see them little kids that's got cancer, and, and uh, I just remember so many times uh, how Harry uh, Ashley would say, you know, it's, uh, he said, I'm, I'm fine because if you walk down the hall, you'll find some better, and you'll find some worse. Compared to the ones that's worse, I'm fine. But I just think about all that. It's just, it's just, uh, it just almost overwhelming. So David makes a declaration, the Lord is my shepherd. But then there's an, an immediate result. Immediate. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does that mean to you? When you hear that phrase, I shall not want, what does that mean to you? He provides our provision, the things we need. Maybe not everything we want, but everything we need, right? Man can't eat steak every night. He'd get tired of it, wouldn't he? I don't know. Can't imagine that, but probably would. I shall not want. What does that mean to you? Provides provision. Give anybody a peace? Is it providing peace for you? Hope? It gives you a deep relaxation knowing that everything is laid out for you. Yeah. And the Lord is there. Yeah. Deep, deep relaxation. I like that. That's better than what a spa can do, ain't it? I wouldn't want no stranger touching me nowhere. I'd be like, never mind. <laughs> I like that deep relaxation. What it does for me, I shall not want. It's pretty good. Think about what David was saying. And then you think about what you, you might think about. The Lord is my shepherd. David was thinking about God, the God of Israel, the God that he had already seen. Think about what David had already seen God do. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if there's anybody here to say this, but I want to see a bear. I don't necessarily want to fight a bear. I get so aggravated. Everybody around me taking a picture. Have a bear half a mile down the road. I want to see a live bear. I don't know what I'm going to do if I see it, but I want to see a live bear in, in the wild. I mean, you know. Uh, but think about it. He talks about him fighting the bear and the lion. I'm talking about David knew what it meant to say, the Lord is my shepherd. He provides me with everything I needed. I mean, think about this. When you remember... I said Sunday when David wrote the 23rd Psalm, he was an old man. So all these experiences we, we read about David is when he was an older man. So he could probably sit there and think back. I remember that time when I reached down in that brook and pulled out five smooth stones. You know? I'm afraid when I meet a bear, I might look down. Oh, well. <laughs> might not have nothing, right? Think about that. He began to think about his relationship with God, and he made this analogy of, of uh, a shepherd and sheep. So God was like a shepherd to David, and David was like a sheep to God. So consider the shepherd. You know, when you think about the shepherd, especially back in these days, in Old Testament days, um, it wasn't a coveted job. It was usually a, a hired servant, possibly a slave, uh, in the lines of the family, you think about Joseph, and you think about David himself, you will find them out tending the sheep. You know, the older brothers got to be back at the house where all the action was going on, but the youngest son, so the least, had to go out there and tend to the sheep. Now, Jesus says something in John chapter 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. That's what Jesus says. He makes that declaration. I am the good shepherd shepherd. So when you think about that, some historical knowledge of what the shepherds did for the sheep 
I think, would bring uh, a great deal of knowledge and illumination uh, to what Jesus is saying. When he says, I am the good shepherd, so he's comparing himself to a shepherd. And so let's see what a shepherd is. Uh, especially back in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there were two main threads, or two main ideas of uh, using shepherding uh, uh, analogy. First, that we see is that God is the good shepherd of Israel. So, 23rd Psalm, this is certainly not the first. In fact, I'll show you the first in just a minute. Um, in Genesis chapter 48 is the first time we see God referred to as the shepherd. Uh, the very first record, which says, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. So there's so many scriptures in the Bible that elaborate on this theme as God being the good shepherd. Psalms chapter 28 and verse 9 is one of them. David invited the Lord uh, to shepherd the people and to bear them forever. Psalms 80 verse 1. Uh, I just want to call out some. There's a bunch of them, but I just want to call out a few. Psalms 80 verse 1. Uh, the Lord as the shepherd of Israel who would lead Joseph like a flock. Like a shepherd would lead the flock, he's going to lead Jesus, uh, Joseph. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 11 uh, speaks of the words of the wise which are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11 says the Lord will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm. That's a, good, that's a good thought right there. I know you see that painting uh, where the shepherd is holding, holding the little lamb. Micah chapter 7 verse 14. It invites the Lord to shepherd your people with your staff as in days of old. I, I, I like this comparison because I think it definitely makes a relation to the New Testament. I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, Zechariah chapter three, 13, verse 7 speaks of the Messiah as a shepherd who will be struck and his sheep scattered. It's another reference. And uh, in fact, that one was quoted in Matthew. And, and so that was a uh, prophecy. The shepherd is going to be struck and his sheep is going to be scattered. And of course, we know that's exactly what happened. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25 calls Jesus the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. And 1 Peter 5, 4 calls Jesus the chief shepherd. So the first thread of this theological thought of using, using uh, this idea of, of shepherding, you know, as, as a theological idea, is that God is Israel's good shepherd. And Jesus says in the New Testament, and I think it's neat how this is put together. He says, first, I am. That's pretty significant, isn't it? You know where that's coming from. I am the good shepherd. So here again, even in, in this simple little idea, Jesus is connecting himself to God the Father, one and the same. The second thread uh, of thought, if you will, in the Old Testament, is that human rulers, and kings, and different people were also compared to shepherds. Um, they were to shepherd the people. And it was modeled after the good shepherd. I think this is where the idea where uh, modern days, a lot of times, a pastor is, is called the under shepherd. I think that's where that may come from. But here's what, when you think about things like this, Here's where it becomes uh, pretty crazy pretty fast. It becomes uh, very clear very quickly that as we read through the Old Testament, we see a lot of people who are supposed to be shepherding not doing a very good job. And we have so many references in the Old Testament. Oftentimes, these kings and leaders 
they're chastised by the prophets. We can read through the Old Testament in the major and the minor prophets and see where they're chastising the king or the leader because they're not doing a very good job of leading the people. They are not shepherding the people after the model of the good shepherd. And so, you know, just there's so many there we can't even mention them, but you understand what I'm, what I'm saying. They did a terrible job at shepherding. Chapter, uh, uh, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 21, uh, the Bible says this, For the pastors are become brutish. And I thought, that's a neat word. Uh, brutish. And that word means to, the word literally means to burn. So the pastors become brutish. And they have not sought the Lord, therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks will be scattered. Other translations uses uh, that word brutish, uses words like uh, dull-hearted, lost their senses or senseless. And many, many of them, uh, especially the newer translations, uses the word stupid. So the pastors are become foolish. A lot of people I know I've heard of over the years do not like the word stupid. But, you know, regardless, uh, that's the word many uh, translation uses. So you think about that. The pastors have become dull-hearted, senseless. So Jeremiah is not the only prophet uh, to develop this theme of of bad shepherds. We look through, like in Isaiah chapter 56, verses 9 through 12, it calls the leaders of Israel shepherds who have no understanding. So look at what we're talking about here. The first thread is God as the good shepherd. The second thread is the leaders, the kings, all these people who are supposed to be leaders, supposed to be modeling uh, after the good shepherd. They're not being very good shepherds. Why? Because they're senseless. They're not using good judgment. They're not, as, as Isaiah said, they're shepherds who have no understanding. Could you imagine if you were put out in the field tonight with a thousand sheep? Said, there you go. I bet you every one of them would be scattered by in the morning if I went out there. I don't know how to herd sheep. <laughs> a whole lot of sheep. Damn chops, I'm hungry. Mark, I'm hungry. I mean, think about it. I wouldn't want to do that. So, Jeremiah and Isaiah both. In the Old Testament, we see two things. God is the good shepherd of Israel, and Israeli leaders, the Israelite leaders, were terrible shepherds. Most of them. Some of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I think about today. I think God has certainly, and I know that people always say, you know, you're not supposed to put yourself down. But I realize, I want you to know, I recognize that God is teaching you guys an incredible lesson of patience and forgiveness to have me as your pastor. And, and I mean that with all my heart. I really do. And I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to put myself down or try to put myself up. I'm just saying, God must really be getting y'all ready for something <laughs> to have me here. So, uh, so if, you know, I do my best or I fail, I have successes, all that good stuff. We can all put our names in that blank, right? But in this study, looking at this, though, you think, well, gosh, I want to be better. I, wa I want to do everything I possibly can do for the Lord the very best I can do it. Amen? Amen. I, I mean, that's what we want to do, right? Amen. We want to do that. Remember, Jesus declares himself as the good shepherd, and what he's doing is he's pulling from the Old Testament both of those threads, both of, of the things that, that it means in the Old Testament. Jesus is saying... I am the good shepherd, and I am 
going to lead the ones who are supposed to lead. So uh, those metaphors, uh, you know, Jesus is making this declaration. So in relation to the first idea, God is a good shepherd. Jesus is saying, I'm identifying myself with God. I am God. And that was the declaration he made. That's what put him on the cross. That's what, that's, you know, that's why they crucified him. You can't say you're God. You can't heal somebody. Who are you? You can't forgive sin. Who are you? Put him on the cross, right? And he's saying, he's making himself equal to God. And he's saying this. He said, I am the bread of life. He says, I am the light of the world. And so Jesus is making these declarations. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David is making his declaration and saying, here's how it's going to take place. This is why the Lord's my shepherd, because I'm not going to want. Jesus is saying, I'm the good shepherd. I am God. And then the second idea of the Israelis not being or being terrible shepherds, Jesus is saying, I'm going to fulfill what they couldn't do. So here we, are, we come back to the same idea of grace versus the law. So God's the good shepherd. We know that. These leaders are supposed to be, and Jesus is saying, I'm going to be what they can't. Now, Jesus was 100% God, right? That's what we believe. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so we believe that Jesus is God. But we also know the Bible teaches that Jesus was 100% man. So you've got God, the good shepherd, and you've got God in the form of his son Jesus doing what man cannot do. Man has never been able to do that. And so Jesus is saying, I'm fulfilling that role. So you could throw me out that door and you have every access that you had while I was in here. Might, might even have better access. You'd rely on God more, right? So that's what's so amazing about this. And and also so frustrating when I talk to some of my friends who think they got to go, uh, and I do have some Catholic friends who think they have to go to their priest for forgiveness. That's frustrating because the scripture itself is uh, talks about the priesthood of the believer. Ooh, well, I wouldn't want to be in that spot. So, Jesus is the true leader of Israel, being both truly God and truly man. And so, Jesus is able to represent both Israel at the same time that he's representing God because he, he is God and he's fulfilling um, what they could not do. So, David says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you now? Maybe some of you didn't answer a while ago, and you've been thinking about it, and now you want to answer it. He's got it all under control. I like that. Either. God's got it squared away. We're going to go into the rod and the staff and all that later. But just think about that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. I think I'm going to leave here tonight, Donnie, with what you said in my mind. What did you say? I didn't realize say it. He said I can't remember. I, I, I'm trying to remember the exact words. I believe it was deep relaxation. Deep relaxation. Deep relaxation. We, we can always, Mug, here's our secretary. Uh, well, what do you call them people that write those things down? Okay, there's our note taker. Say it again, Beth. Deep relaxation with everything is laid out for us. That's pretty Take good. Us. said to begin with, so. Yeah, yeah. Can't, get, can't hit a home run every time. Yeah. All 
right, let's pray. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this time. And Lord, help us to learn each and every day more and more and more about what David is talking about, that you are a shepherd and we shall not want. Help us to live that way. Lord, we're so fragile. Lord, we just uh, rely upon you so much. But Lord, I believe you want us to rely upon you. But Lord, I know that you also want us to stand firm when we're supposed to, to flee when we're supposed to. But Lord, I pray uh, that you'll help us in that, and I know that you will. But Lord, let us just take that idea tonight. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, we ask all these things in your wonderful mighty name.